Humanity has always been plagued by various pandemics. Between 1346 and 1353, the biggest epidemic in the history of Europe occurred. The bubonic plague, or Black Death. Something similar to this magnitude is unknown, and can only be compared to the terrible plague in the times of the Roman Emperor Justinian, between 541 and 543. This plague arrived via Ethiopia and to the Egyptian port of Pelusio, and from there it travelled to the capital, Constantinople, spreading through all the commercial routes of the Mediterranean and on to the rest of Europe. The death toll it caused was terrible. According to Procopius, the main source, there were days when between 10,000 and 15,000 people were buried in Constantinople. It is estimated that the city lost 40% of its population and that Europe lost about 4 million people. Now, let's go back to the 14th century and see what the characteristics of the Black Death were. In the first half of the 14th century, there was a little ice age that caused a decline in harvests. This made the population of Europe more vulnerable in general. Unlike other diseases, bubonic plague did not distinguish between social classes. It affected rich and poor, religious and lay people, kings and servants alike. Its origin was unknown, for science was not yet sufficiently developed. There were all kinds of theories. Some attributed it to the corruption of the air that caused the decomposition of organic matters. Others, like the scholars of the Sorbonne University, justified it by the appearance of eclipses and the alignment of certain planets. Dr. Alfonso de Cordoba stated that the origin could be in a geological fault caused by a recent earthquake in Italy that released gases from hell into the atmosphere. A doctor from Marseille ruled that it was transmitted by looking directly into the eyes, and ecclesiastics cried out from the pulpit of their churches that it was a punishment from God for the sins of mankind. The real explanation was much simpler, or not, depending on how you look at it. The disease was transmitted by an infectious bacterium called Yersinia pestis, which affected rats. And the rats had fleas, which, by the way of a bite, transmitted this microorganism to human beings. In the Middle Ages, rats and fleas lived together with the people in the streets, in houses, on boats. What was the process of the plague? Bubonic plague is a zoonosis, an infectious disease that, as we have seen, passes from animals to humans. It took between 16 and 23 days to incubate. Then the symptoms arrived, mainly fever and the appearance of large lumps. It typically killed the patient in three to five days. The Decameron by Florentine author Giovanni Boccaccio is a work marked by the experience of the plague. He lived through the epidemic in person. It describes the spread and symptoms perfectly. Yet not as it has done in the East, where if any bled at the nose, it was a manifest sign of inevitable death. Nay, but in men and women alike there appeared, at the beginning of the malady, certain swellings, either on the groin or under the armpits, whereof some waxed of the bigness of a common apple, which the common folk name plague boils. The contagion began to change into black or livid blotches, which showed themselves in many on the arms and about the thighs, and after, spread to every other part of the person. And Boccaccio says that both the swelling and the spots were a very certain token of coming death. Sometimes the disease had other variants. For example, the septicemic plague that was produced when the infectious agent passed into the blood, producing large spots on the skin, hence the other common name of the disease, the Black Death. The other variety was the pneumonic plague, which was produced when the bacteria passed into the lungs of the patient. Both septicemic and pneumonic were fatal in almost 100% of cases. So, how did it spread throughout Europe? It is known that the bubonic plague originated in China, where it claimed the lives of millions of people. From there it passed to Central Asia, ruled by the Mongols. 
through the commercial flow of the Silk Road, it would soon reach Europe. The first place affected was the commercial city of Kaffa in the Crimean Peninsula. The population was besieged by the Mongolian army of the Golden Horde. Some of the soldiers among the Asian troops were already sick. It is said that they threw pieces of the plague victims' bodies over the walls with their catapults to make the besieged people sick. As soon as the epidemic broke out in the streets of the city, Genoese merchants fled in their ships full of rats, carrying the bacteria first to Constantinople, then to Alexandria, until they reached Sicily. When they arrived back in Genoa, it was already known that they were bringing the plague and they were not allowed to dock. So they set course for the ports in the south of modern-day France, such as Marseille, and those of the crown of Aragon. And from those places, no one could stop the spread of the pestilence throughout the rest of Europe. Very few areas were spared the scourge of the disease. Only countries like Iceland and Finland were so lucky. There are many differences between the various estimates of deaths caused by the plague in the 14th century. The highest give a figure of deaths that is closest to 60% of the European population at the time, while the most conservatives say that this figure is only valid for regions in Europe that were particularly affected, or for heavily populated commercial cities like Marseille, for example. And that it would be no more correct to say that between 30 and 40% of Europeans died. In Paris, one of the most affected cities, more than 500 people were buried each day. Europe, also due to periodic outbreaks of the plague, took 200 years to recover its previous level of inhabitants. Some of the most affected cities, such as Florence, would not manage to fully recover until the 19th century. The epidemic changed the world forever. The feudal system, around which society was organized in the Middle Ages, collapsed. In the face of the lack of labor, wages rose. The authority of the nobles and the church decreased in favor of the king, who concentrated more and more power. The population that did survive the plague migrated in great numbers from the countryside to the cities. And the poor peasants who stayed in the villages and towns were able to cultivate more extensive tracts of land that had been released and not exploited, greatly improving their standard of living. The nobility and clergy opposed this shift and developed laws that tried uselessly to stop this emigration. They also tried to annul the wage increases, but the only thing they achieved was that the people, in the country, as well as in the cities, rebelled violently. Things not only changed on the social plane, but also on the intellectual plane, in the fields of arts and science. Two ways of dealing with the phenomenon of the plague emerged. On the one hand, those who gave themselves up to the pursuit of all kinds of pleasures and excesses without thinking about an uncertain tomorrow. And on the other hand, those who chose the opposite approach, such as the flagellants, who were convinced that the end of the world was near. Paradoxically, this great mortality caused a cultural change in which God stopped being the center of everything and that place was taken by man. The period known as the Middle Ages gave way to the Renaissance, to the early modern period. In every crisis, there is always a scapegoat. In this case, it was the Jews. They were accused of poisoning wells, ports, and streets in order to destroy Christians. Many were to die in the pogroms of Germany, Switzerland, Aragon, etc. It was necessary for Pope Clement VI to publish a papal bull to exonerate them from responsibility for the plague. This pope also declared the movement established by the flagellants to be heresy. The plague periodically reappeared, but with less intensity in Europe until the beginning of the 18th century and in the rest of the world until the 19th century. Today, the plague is cured with antibiotics, but it is far from being eradicated. In the United States, cases have been reported in New Mexico, Arizona, California, and Colorado. Cases have been detected in Africa. In 2017, in Madagascar, where it is endemic, there was a terrible outbreak that affected nearly 2,000 people and took the lives of nearly 200. 
From all that we have told you, we can take away the hope that throughout history, humanity has faced different epidemics, and that, although sometimes it has paid a high price, it has always overcome them.